Hi guys. Oh, hi. 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 <laughs> hi. Welcome back to the Data Science J YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about data analyst interview questions, tips, tricks, guides, and going over the eight different types of questions you'll see on your next data analyst interview. Let's jump right into it. So at my company, Interview Query, we regularly actually analyze data analyst interviews and topics on uh, what's actually being said in these interviews. Mainly, we've seen that there's mostly been a huge influx in SQL being the primary actual skill covered in these data analyst interviews. Second behind that usually is product case questions and data analytics case questions, then statistics and probability, some A-B testing, and then a little bit of coding as well. I'd say that for most data analyst interviews as well, you'll find a lot of behavioral interview questions asked. Uh, these are primarily just to judge your communication skills, as I think one of the most important roles for data analysts are be able to enunciate their words correctly. <laughs> so on that note, let's just dive into a few behavioral interview questions that data analysts are gonna see. These are usually pretty simple in my mind, depending on your level or skill. So if you're a new grad, it might be a little bit more difficult to talk about your experience. But if you've been in the industry for a few years, I think you should be able to draw up on a lot of experience that you've had previously, either in different kinds of technology roles or just working on projects. For example, I'll just go through these rapid fire. Describe a time that you spotted an inconsistency. How did you respond? So for this kind of question, it's pretty simple. This one's asking about data quality and data issues when you're analyzing data. So for a lot of these, you can just talk about how you solve this problem either by subsetting out the data or talking to the data engineer or fixing it with a team member. Talk about a time where you had to make a decision in a lot of uncertainty. This is gonna be a question that you're gonna face mainly just to kind of understand your decision-making skills, right? So you have to, one, bring up a time where you actually had uncertainty in your job, and then two, tackle this question in the form of saying exactly how you approach uncertainty. A lot of the time, this is about breaking down problems. So if you think about the STAR framework and clarifying the question, you know, understanding the problem situation, understanding the different needs and how to address it, you can see that a lot of this is kind of like behavioral analysis. How would you convey insights and methods you use to a non-technical audience? How do you set goals and achieve them? Describe a time when you solve the conflict at work. Give an example of a situation when you've shown effectiveness, empathy, humbleness, and adaptability. Give me an example of a time when you failed a project. Talk about an occasion where you use logic to solve a problem. What do you do if you disagree with your manager? So these are pretty standard behavioral questions. I'm not gonna dive too deep into them. You can always check out some videos on YouTube or search online about general behavioral questions and how to solve them. Next up, we have SQL interview questions for data analysts. So SQL interview questions, as I said before, are the most common technical interview question that's going to occur on most data analyst interviews, especially for tech roles. So if you're interviewing at companies like Facebook, Google, you know, all those hot thing companies, you're definitely gonna get some SQL interview questions because every one of the tech companies uses SQL religiously. If you're working at more of a mid-sized company, maybe not completely focused in tech, maybe it's in finance, consulting, ads, you know, et cetera, not in the Bay Area, you might be getting questions more around Excel, Tableau, not necessarily SQL, but more so more of the old kind of tools like SAS, if you do get those questions, we'll talk about those later, but for now, let's focus more on SQL. For data analysts, usually there's three main types of questions within SQL questions that I see most often. Specifically, there's just general basic SQL questions. These are definitions, asking about inner or outer joins, kind of stuff you should know, I think, if you're preparing for a data analyst interview. And then you get analytics types of SQL interview questions. So these are more focused around understanding how to think of a metric and then also write a query to solve it. For example, the last kind of question or a kind of standard SQL question is like, you know, write a query to generate a report that gives you the month over month change. Instead of actually asking for that specific query on getting the month over month change, the interviewer would be like, let's look at this table of transactions and products. Could you think of a query that you would write that allow us to look at how products are changing over time? And so for you as an analyst, you have to come up with the fact that 
probably this interviewer wants something like month over month change in pricing. And then you'd have to justify that answer, number two, and then they would ask you to finally write the query to actually generate that answer. So it's definitely more open-ended. I would say it's a little bit harder because you have to do the analytics kind of like thinking part before actually writing the query. Because if you think about a lot of kind of SQL monkey work or reporting work, a lot of times it's just writing a query. Go over a couple examples. Let's start out with basic SQL questions. These are something like, what are the different ways of handling null when querying a data set? Or what's the difference between union and union all? But to jump into the reporting kind of interview questions, here's an example. Write a query that returns all the neighborhoods that have zero users. Given a table of job postings, write a query to break down the number of users that have posted their jobs once versus the number of users that have posted their job multiple times. And if you want to see the solution to this, you can check out this video right here. Hopefully something comes up. Lastly, a harder kind of SQL reporting question is, given a user's table, write a query to get the cumulative number of new users added by day with the total reset every month. Cool, so those are all examples of more reporting, more straightforward SQL questions. Here are some questions that are more analytics based. Given a table of search results, write a query to compute a metric to measure the quality of the search results for each query. So for this question specifically, we have to go through and actually understand what the metric it is we want to compute. All right, let's jump into the second type of interview question that you'll see on your data analyst interview. Data analytics case study type questions. So these questions can range anywhere from being more of like a product case study which is more talking about like, how does this feature change affect this product versus more of a business case question that's more like, should Spotify acquire this podcast service and what does it do for them? Versus lastly, more analytics case study, which is the one that we just kind of talked about, which is more so you're given this data set, come up with three metrics to analyze that you think would be interesting for the PM to look into given this data set and given this business situation. For tackling these kinds of case study type questions, the easiest way to always do it is to apply frameworks. And you can check out the product data science video that I've made. I'll have in the link below for that one. For business case questions, I'd highly recommend checking out the MECE framework, M-E-C-E for how to tackle big generalized problems that don't really have uh, real solutions. And then lastly, for data analytics case study questions, I would highly recommend going through each case study and understanding exactly what the end user wants and how we can create metrics to actually bring them to them. A couple more example questions from here would be like, describe an analytics experiment that you designed. How are you able to measure success? In this case, this is more talking about A-B testing and experimentation. And so you should go through in your past, think about a project where you designed uh, an A-B test and then how you actually measured the success of your A-B test. A more difficult question would be something like, okay, given this table on ad impressions, generate a daily report that tells us how much each campaign delivered in the previous seven days. And so you'll write the query for this, but then the interviewer will give you a part two and be like, using this data, how do we evaluate how each campaign is delivering and by what heuristic do we surface promos that need attention? For this question, we have to go through and actually come up with a heuristic for each campaign. Specifically, now we have to know, okay, what does the advertiser care about? Okay, the advertiser probably cares about low costs for each impression. We can now come up with a heuristic that's like, Let's do a uh, heuristic like CPM. The third kind of question that you'll probably see the most is gonna be a Python coding question. And so Python coding questions are usually pretty simple. They're not as difficult as most questions seen on leak code. Mainly most interviews just wanna test your basic knowledge of Python to the point that they know that you can write scripts or some basic functions to move data around between SQL and Excel or onto a dashboard. Usually the reason why data analysts never have to write production code is because their code is never under that kind of scrutiny and they're never actually writing code towards a, like a critical business function. And so most of these coding interview questions are gonna be on the easier side. For example, let's go through a few. One that we see show up a lot is write a function that can take a string and return a list of bigrams. Bigrams are basically taking the first two sequence of words in a sentence, basically, you know, this is pretty clear data manipulation problem, it shouldn't be too hard. Write a function that takes in a list of dictionaries with a key and a list of integers and return a dictionary with the standard deviation of each list. 
So for this question, you know, we're combining the fact that you should know what a standard deviation is and statistics, and then also be able to apply that to a dictionary. So we're just looping through the dictionary and basically applying the standard deviation function. Given a list of timestamps in sequential order, return a list of lists grouped by week using the first timestamp as the starting point. This one's a little trickier. I would say that you need a better knowledge of Python and it's a little bit of algorithms in it. But for the most part, you know, if you can iterate, write for loops, check dates, you'll be good. Explain negative indexing. What purpose does it serve? And so questions like this that are just about Python characteristics, like what is type is existence or like how do you check if a string is an integer? All these questions are gonna be more so in technical screens over the phone. They won't be necessarily like the technical screen where you're actually coding them. Lastly, we get to probability and statistics interview questions. So these questions are pretty common, but I would say statistics questions come up more in data analyst interviews because they ask about specific things where you might be running A-B tests, you might be analyzing distributions, Versus probability questions are a little trickier. You know, I don't think interviewers like to trick candidates. And many times as a data analyst, you don't really need to know probability. It's more focused for data scientists and machine learning engineers that are actually doing more kind of modeling work where probability is more of a fundamental kind of characteristic there. But as a data analyst, you never know specifically on like Facebook, Google interviews, I think they do ask a little bit of probability, but definitely a lot more statistics. For example, a really standard kind of question out the gate could be, what is an unbiased estimator and can you provide an example for a layman to understand? Right out the gate, they just want to know, do you understand this and can you explain it to me and teach it back to me, this concept? Another really common one is, what is a p-value and how would you explain a p-value to a five-year-old? This is primarily a very simple standard statistics you know, concept that they want to know that you can actually explain towards like a PM, especially if you're analyzing an AB test and then the PM's like, let's use this variant. And you're like, nope, p-values, don't do it, p-values. A little harder statistics question is given two uniform distributions, X and Y, and the means of zero and a standard deviation of one for both, what's the probability of two X greater than Y? This is gonna be more of a trickier question. I would assume you'd see this in probably more finance related roles as well. Let's say we have a sample size of n, the margin of error for our sample size is three. How many more samples would we need to decrease the margin of error to 0.3? So in order to decrease our margin of error, we'll probably have to increase our sample size, but by how much? Lastly, what's the difference between correlation and covariance? Covariance measures the linear relationship of variables. Correlation is a function of covariance. Good things to know. All right, I wanna go over A-B testing and experimentation. So data analysts generally do have to analyze A-B tests. Many times, I don't think you have to get too detailed into it, but specifically, you'll see that at the bigger companies, they run so many A-B tests all the time, and you'll probably be asked a couple questions about A-B testing. Similarly, causal inference, which is more of a statistics concept, but related to A-B testing will also be potentially asked for your data analyst interviews. Again, these are more from tech focused kind of data analyst questions. And so if you're interviewing at startups, mid-sized tech companies or fan companies, definitely focus on getting good at A-B testing because in software you can A-B test a lot. So for example, let's say that your company is running a standard control and variant A-B test on a feature to increase conversion rates on the landing page. The PM checks the result and finds a 0.04 p-value. How would you assess the validity of this result? Let's say you work at Uber, a PM comes to you considering a new feature where instead of a direct ETA instrument like five minutes would instead display a range of something like three to seven minutes. How would you conduct this experiment and how would you know if your results were significant? This is more difficult kind of a question. Here you actually be forced to analyze a case scenario where there's a multi-sided marketplace here, right? A range of three to seven minutes affects drivers as well as candidates. And so when you're conducting this experiment and talking about it, make sure that you're actually clarifying every situation, what matters and exactly how to set this experiment up. How can you effectively design an A-B test? Are there times when A-B testing shouldn't be used? Split testing fails when you have unclear goals also. Is it to increase conversions? Are you trying to increase engagement and time spent with the page? Once you have that goal, you can actually start experimenting. If you don't have really good goals, then A-B testing is not very good. How much traffic do you need to drive to a page for the result of an A-B test to be significant? 
So statistical significance requires the right volume of data. You can actually calculate this using a you know sample size calculator. I don't know if that will let you pass the interview though, but most of the time I think most normal people, especially when they're practical people that are data analysts will let you pass on this, but some crazy PhD psychos might actually want you to come up with that formula, you know, out of the blue and have that memorized in the back of your head. So I don't know, maybe just leave the interview at that point. For this one, I want to talk about data analysts kind of Excel interview questions and visualization interview questions. So these are definitely more uncommon for tech companies, but we're just generalize, you know, data analysts interviews at, let's say Capital One, consulting firms, banks, not to throw out, you know, Capital One here, you're gonna be using a lot more Excel. It's more about the environment that you use. If everyone else is using SQL, then you're gonna use SQL. If everyone else is using Excel, then you're gonna use Excel. And so obviously they're gonna ask you these interview questions uh, during the interview. But generally, if you know Excel, SQL, Pandas, then they're pretty confident that you can pick up one or the other. It just kind of depends on how flexible the interviews are uh, and exactly how much your interviewers actually know the different types. Here's a couple Excel questions that are pretty common. Uh, explain the VLOOKUP function. What are the limitations of VLOOKUP? What is conditional formatting? What is a good time to use conditional formatting? What questions would you ask before making a dashboard chart or visualization? A couple Tableau data visualization interview questions as well are What's the difference between dimensions and measures? What is aggregation in Tableau? What are aggregate functions? What is data blending? All right, that about wraps it up for this kind of data analyst interview questions guide. I hope that I provided some good context for your next interview and just understanding how to prepare for it. Um, if you wanna learn more, I highly recommend reading our blog post on this subject matter and also just going to interview query and practicing more questions. I can't really stress enough how much, you know, it helps to actually practice questions versus just reading about an interview coming up and praying that's gonna go well. For the, I'm sorry, we've developed a lot of different kind of functionality on interview query now to make it the best one-stop shop for all of your interviews. And so please come check us out. But yeah, if you wanna learn more, check out some other videos that I've made and uh, I'll see you guys around.